What's up friends of the good boot? This is Manny and welcome to a video. This is how you Fafnir. I'm gonna show you this new 7.1 meta robot in two versions. Havoc and with Storm. So the ultra short range brawlers, because it has 50% resistance, 100 defense points. It is an excellent brawler, but there are so many ways to play this thing. It's so tricky and I want to show you how I was able to make the best of my Fafnir here in this match. And the trick was to never leave flight, to actually keep flying all the time, all right? Except for a few uh, situations here, once in the beginning where I land real quick. And this is the trick, I think, maybe, to dealing so much damage. Of course, those four Havocs, as you see right here, dealing tra dramatic damage to the enemy, but they are empty eventually. And this is where you start on the long run to benefit from the extra built-in cannon that the Fafnir has if you're start staying in the flight ability, because it never has to reload, right? Now, I want to protect the at a beacon under attack, and I don't want to be flying too high. So this is a how-to or a this is how you play. So I'm dropping first, and then I activate flight as I fall. This way I make sure that my flight altitude is not too high so I can still take care of the beacon and uh, keep it uh, keep it blue right if they were like if I was alone here they would not be able to capture the beacon because I'm flying on it and you can make such fast circles in the flight no one is gonna be able to hit you this quick all right and here it comes since my enemies and my team is fighting each other down there I can just stay in flight no one is bothering me right here and my havocs are reloading now so what I could do, I could land and fire a couple of shots with the Havocs, but then they would be empty. And uh, what I do right here is I just stay in the flight, and I just do as much damage as I can using the built-in cannon. And, uh, and I have the necessary speed to get back in safety anytime I need to. Whenever somebody attacks me now, I could get in, in safety unless I get insta-locked or something. With anti-control, you can prevent that from happening as well. Beyond godlike as well uh, already, and the first time somebody pays attention to me is this guy. But here's the thing, with this much mobility and speed, no one is going to be able to deal damage to you with rockets or with flamethrowers. It's simply impossible, and he realized that too, and goes for a different target now, because he knows there's not gonna... He's just not gonna deal any damage, it's not gonna happen. So he went for a different target. Now... I'm gonna be back in the center beacon, doing my very best to protect this, doing massive damage with the Havoc, and then, within a matter of seconds, using the insane mobility that the uh, Fafnir has, in my opinion, too much mobility, by the way, uh, to go back to the, uh, to the base here and make sure this guy is never gonna do another flight. He's face shifting, he would have maybe even gotten into another flight ability, but not with me on top of that, okay? Then a second later, I'm already half, half past the next towards the enemy beacon here and uh, destroying the Fenrir. I notice he's firing at me. I'm giving him a chance to go for something else by uh, going for somebody else myself. But he's still on me, so I guess it's good that I can take him down real quick with those Havocs, the increased damage. Don't forget, every time I activate the active module, I get a mad damage boost from like 60%, right? Uh, with a healing uh, boost, in trouble, uh, revitalizing thingy. Rampage already. And ladies and gents, if you do like the video and you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate if you guys could do this right here. Also, hit the notification bell. That would be so awesome. And yeah, if you do like it, then a comment and maybe a like would be highly appreciated as well. It helps out the video get around some more and uh, be better placed in the algorithm. Um, but yeah, so let's keep going. We have a Loki here uh, who, who decided that it's a good uh, time to attack from behind. Turns out I was actually seeing him before I knew he was coming. I only acted like I wasn't seeing him. And so he dropped the stealth and I was able to be ready for it. With this much firepower, it's not like he goes down any slow. He goes down really quickly. So there's nothing uh, really happening there. He comes out of that pump, gets one hit. And now... Remember, you get an Absorber Shield when you activate flight. So I do as much damage as I can before I start the flight, and then I come in, and uh, with this much speed and mobility, there's nowhere he can go. Um, so, sorry, my friend. You're uh, deleted there. Um, the Fafnir just is so fast. And, oops, I saw the Aochun. You saw him too? The Aochun just spawned in, and I'm not gonna go anywhere near this thing when it's flying. Although he does have the Glacier Rockets, and it would be difficult, like, like this guy as well. Look. He would be dealing damage to me so much, but, yo, he can't. I'm just too fast, I'm too mobile, too nimble, and there's no damage he can do. But I saw the hawk coming up. See that hawk? Here, this dude? Yeah. And then there's another hawk. I was like, come on, man, where's all the hawks coming from all of a sudden? 
But you know what? That's okay. Because it gives us an opportunity to jump into the Storm version. Because I told you, this was going to be the ultra short range brawling variants of the Fa Fafnir. If you do want to see the Fafnir with a brand new um, Skadi weapon, so this 600 meter range laser thingy, in the top right corner and the video description and pinned comment, I'll have the brand new video linked to you. Uh, let me just tell you, the new Fafnir sk uh, with Skadi is probably the worst thing you can run. I, I mean, the, the strongest thing, the worst for your enemies. It is really powerful and ver very devastating to the enemy if you run this thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so check out this video if you haven't yet seen it. It's really, uh, I think in my opinion, probably the best you can uh, you can put on, on the Fafnir right now. But as you see in this video, even ultra short range brawling setups do work. They may not be the best thing in the game, but they do work. And um, yeah, so if you are flying, and, and, and why do they work so well? It's of course because brawling weapons have a lot of firepower. And the Fafnir has massive resistance. 100 defense point, 50% resistance, and a decent and okay amount of health. That allows you to really pack a punch, even uh, with uh, with those uh, when you get in close range, right? And not get taken down so easily. Now, we have an enemy Titan in front of us. That's the other strength that the Fafnir has. Upon activation of flight, you get the Absorber Shield, and then you're so fast that Titans just won't be able to hit you. I'm waiting for my uh, overdrive to activate and this is when I'm deleting him. Look at this. That's just the center weapon right there. And a little bit of storm once in a while doing a storm shot. Do you see this? That is just insane. Did you see how insanely fast I deleted that, um, that, uh, that Ao Ming? That was just me firing at him and he went down faster than a hawk would have killed him, If you, I think. Even a hawk wouldn't have killed him this fast. And uh, yeah, so guys, this is a titan killer and that's why I also put this, these words into the thumbnail of the video with the Scotty that I've talked to you and whoops, and he, he accelerated me. This is so awesome. I knew that was gonna happen, by the way. I knew if I jump over him, he's gonna use his shockwave and he's gonna accelerate into like so high now and I can while shooting up here kill this guy. Look at that. How insane is this? That was really cool, dude. Uh, thanks for the boost, Arthur. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is really crazy. I'm gonna go in again. Overdrive is running due to the damage I have taken so far. I can capture the beacon here while landing real quick together with the Phantom. And I think that was prob that's probably the end of this first match, but there is more where this came from, so stay tuned. Because in this video, all I focus on is showing you these ultra short range brawlers. And I want to show you that this is actually a viable technique to run it. However, I'm also going to say it right here. 18 kills, by the way, right? 18. My entire team has 12, um, 15, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 14. 14 kills is what my entire team has. I have 18. <laughs> That's so crazy. Um, I'm going to say here that, uh, look, with the resistance and firepower, even two strong brawlers, two strong brawlers coming at you, no problem. You're gonna dodge a few shots with left and right, and then you activate the Absorber Shield. And I even made a mistake here. I should have waited with the Absorber Shield a, a second longer, because then I would have had the Overdrive. Now, here's the thing. What do I do now? Do I land, activate my resistance? Do I stay in flight? Do I get on the beacon to make sure they can't get it? What would you do right now? Think about it. You guys are War Robots players. You're experienced in the game. What would you think, what would you do right now? Landing or flying? That's the first decision to make in this situation. You're in a two-on-one with among the most powerful brawlers that exist in the game, right? Uh, so let me just show you how I, how I solved the situation or what I thought was the best thing to do is staying in flight and using the mobility to just dodge everything, right? So getting in the beacon range, I'm taking a few hits, but I'm so close to them now. Look, I can't even turn this fast and he can't either. I'm so close and so fast around him, there's no way he can deal damage to me. It's just not gonna happen. Unless somebody locks me down or so, there's no damage coming in. There could be three more guys on the beacon of the enemy. They wouldn't deal damage to me. They can't see me, they can't fire at me. You can't shoot what you can't see, right? So uh, I think sometimes, and that doesn't, that, that probably doesn't work always, but sometimes the best defense you have on the Fenrir, eh, sorry, the Fafnir, is the mobility. This is much better than the resistance that you have. Because, well, you're not, you're taking no damage if you're not getting hit, you know? 
uh, instead of reduce damage when you're getting hit and absorbing some of that. It's crazy. However, keep in mind, if enemy titans shoot you with Cataclysm and Cyclone, or if enemies are running something like uh, Zeus or Ion, or they are running Scourge, Calamity, Spark, those weapons will not miss you unless you're flying above them or around them and they lose their lock-on, right? That way, you can abuse that. But um, if they are, let's say, 100 or 200 meters away and you're just trying to fly your circles to make them miss, it's not gonna happen. They, these weapons cannot miss. Um, but um, if, if you get close enough, and re remember, with this thing and the speed you have, you always get close. Like, you can get close to pretty much anyone. Look at him, he's like missing all his... All his precious rockets are going into nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. I can't finish him off, unfortunately, because he had the freaking last stand, but... And I'm locked now. Um, but without the lockdown, I would have finished him off. Also here, you're the first to arrive on the scene, right? You want to be the one cap cap getting the beacon before the uh, Blitz robots and before the um, the Phantom? Well then, how about you just fly all the way over there and do that, right? If you run over, uh, if you run uh, the uh, anti-control on it, then you can even um, you can even uh, make sure nobody can lock you down, so no one can stop you from getting there. And see, I'm in this two-on-one here. Uh, by now, my team has arrived. Okay, but it was a two-on-one for a long time. And uh, yo, I was even, I was easily able to brawl down both people, no problem. Even though they both had all their abilities ready and whatnot, and I didn't even have my ability ready, right? Remember, I didn't have my ability ready. I sat there with ability on cooldown, while they both had, while they both had their ability ready, and I still beat both of them. And that's the strength of the Fafnir, because it's like a Fenrir a little, a mini Fenrir. You don't really need your ability, you just drop the, uh, you just land on the ground and you're tanky as heck. Or, you just stay in the air and you have hammer firepower with that built-in weapon and super crazy mobility. No matter which mode you're rocking on the Fafnir, it's gonna be crazy. And here's the thing, I'm gonna try, I can't promise it, but I'm actually already asking Pixonic if I can give away the Fafnir in the next giveaway, because next giveaway is not far away. And it would be cool if the Fafnir could be the price I can give you. Bam, 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 bye, Scorpion. There you go. Now, we're in short range now. Overdrive is not yet activated, but we can still deal, dish out some damage. But look how we're only firing like every three seconds once. It is so sad to see one of the most powerful weapons back in the days to become this bad. Seriously, any Scourge, any Atomizer, anything would have killed him faster than what I'm running right here. And I'm standing right in front of him with a shotgun, and I can do so little damage only. Alright, anyways, let's activate the build-in weapon and the flight. Right, and then go for this guy. Bats! Oh, gosh, are they going down fast from this. Seriously, this is just out of control. So this is the last situation. I'm actually going to start taking a little bit of damage now from the enemy Arthur in the distance. But look how quickly the Nightingale goes. Look, the built-in weapon is so dangerous. So much power, firepower. I'm trying to take down the fa 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 uh, the Fenrir down there. But of course, he, the, he had last stand. Then he had the purple absorber shield. Then he phase shifts. And it's like 15, 20 minutes of time that he wastes before you can finally take him down. It's just impossible to take down these stupid, annoying things. Uh, but then again, keep in mind, I mean, we're running a Fafnir. And that thing is super powerful as well. Bam, bam, bam. There we go. Yep, it looks like I only have one weapon left, right? But the other two storms are under the wings. And you can't see it. The storm is such a small weapon, you can't see it under the wings. So it looks like it's just one weapon, but you can tell to the right. One, two, and three. Three weapons are still there. Oh boy, bam, bam, bam. Alright, so this is it. That was my, uh, this is how you Fafnir video. I think uh, a really interesting uh, way to play is the fact that you can play it in multiple different ways. You can either go and stay in the air, like I do here most of the time, and use the mobility, or maybe this is an aiming thing. Maybe if you have the aiming really well, right, then you can stay in the air, do the mobility thing, and still hit very accurately yourself. Or you just land and you ma use your massive resistance and firepower with all four medium weapons. I think both options are valid. It's just that if you're like... Uh, attacking different beacons and you want to be on different beacons at the same time and help out everywhere this is where you will probably stay in the air because then you have this insane flight speed and mobility but yeah so uh, thanks for watching everybody 
Hopefully you had some fun. Don't forget to check out the other video with the Scotty weapon uh, that I released um, uh, actually a few minutes ago, but um, I'll be uh, releasing this a, f a couple of days later, maybe tomorrow or the day after or something. Um, so yeah, see you in the next video. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, money signing off. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, bats, down with you. Yeah, eat that. <laughs>